well, I wasn't allowed to wear that stuff anymore. That was on the list. The special dress code list that was only for me did not apply to any other student. I am writing this letter from a jail cell in Andover, Massachusetts. What's my crime, you ask? It all started when I got dressed this morning. It was a cool morning, so I pulled on my long sleeve white zombie shirt and headed for school. In the beginning of classes, Mrs. Parker, Andover High's assistant principal, eyed the shirt and told me it was offensive. The shirt depicted a painting by artist singer Rob Zombie. It was a cartoon of bright colored designs and two cartoon women from the waist up. The women were fully clothed, but had very large breasts. The size of the women's breasts is offensive, she said. Being a 36D myself, I asked if my breasts were offensive as well. Without answering, she told me to go home and change. I asked if I should cut my hair, or wipe off my makeup, or get a breast reduction as well. Then I returned to my class. I was puzzled due to the fact that I had worn and seen other students wearing my shirt before. I was next pulled out of my third period class by my parents, who agreed with my protest and went to talk to the principal, Mr. Thomas. Fifteen minutes later, I was pulled out of class again and forced to either leave with my parents or change my shirt. I demanded my right to an education and declined both choices. Mr. Thomas persisted. So angry, hurt, and violated, I left with my parents. All around me were students wearing co-ed naked shirts, shirts with giant marijuana leaves, and one particularly offensive shirt, in my opinion, that read, Silly faggot, dicks are for chicks. I wondered who has the right to determine what's obscene. No other teachers or students had complained about my shirt, as I have been a crazy dresser since grade school. An hour after I left school, my parents returned me upon realizing that I was right and would never be able to respect myself if I couldn't stand up for my beliefs. I'm a woman of power and direction, and it's people like Miss Parker who turn basic human anatomy into something that's dirty and wrong. I believe that sexual violence is rooted from this sort of attitude. By lunchtime, I was standing on the big rock facing the school, flaunting my shirt. When kids asked what was going on, I told them my story. A few other students joined my protest, but were scared away when Mr. Thomas threatened them. It was down to me and one other student wearing a Nirvana t-shirt with questionable language printed on the back. We stood there talking to others and occasionally yelling up to the kids who were hanging out of the school windows asking what we were doing. Mr. Thomas came out once and stated that we could not come to school tomorrow without our parents. We agreed, and he left. Shortly after that, Mrs. Parker, who had been gone all afternoon, returned with a field trip of kids. By this time, many kids inside the building were gathered around the windows. I had taken my bra off and was covering the women on my shirt with it. Then a cop and a reporter showed up. My partner fled, and I was arrested. They cuffed me as I screamed up at the kids, Think offensively! I was placed into a police car as the entire school looked on. Thank you, Mrs. Parker, I said sarcastically as she watched with determination. My name is Yvonne Nicoletti. I'm an honor student with no past police record, and I was arrested for standing up for my identity, expression, and breast size. Disturbing the peace, they called it. I call it America. Hypocrisy, not democracy. So now I sit here in a small cell with a toilet lacking a seat or toilet paper, having to urinate desperately. I guess they thought only men get arrested. That's the actual letter that went out to Geffen Records <laughs> again. Um, this time I got more than a handwritten letter back. Within about 24 hours, the president of Geffen Records, David Geffen, decided to take the story and give it a full publicity campaign. 
he single-handedly made the decision to release to release the story on the news wires, radio, television, print, internationally across 800 plus news satellites. The Civil Liberties Union in Massachusetts accepted the case and decided to fight for my rights um, being violated. While I was in jail, I was delivered a letter saying I was suspended indefinitely. Over the next few days, I had to have meetings with my lawyers and Mr. Thomas and my parents with terms to allow me to return to school. The terms to allow me to return to school had nothing to do with my academic performance, my words, my actions, the terms only involved my clothes, that I was not allowed to wear my white zombie t-shirt anymore. And I also wasn't allowed to wear my Courtney Love t-shirt anymore. Where'd that come from? I don't know. Where did it come from? Now, after three years of being a complete tomboy, I had started incorporating a little bit of femininity into my wardrobe because it was the mid-90s. And Courtney Love had trended slip dresses and thigh highs and things like that. So I had started wearing some of that stuff. Well, I wasn't allowed to wear that stuff anymore. That was on the list. The special dress code list that was only for me did not apply to any other student but me. Mr. Thomas made statements saying that the 90s feminist movement was a figment of my imagination and the Riot Girls was not a real organization. My club was pulled. My band was barred from performing at the talent show. As well as even the other act that even the, the cause we were going to do two acts. I was going to perform with my girl band, and then we were also we also had um, we were also going to do uh, Rocky Horror lip syncing and dance routine of the time warp. Both acts were pulled. I wasn't allowed to perform at all. When my guitarist um, signed up as a solo performer and went on stage and performed Miss World and dedicated it to me, she was called to the office the next day. And her parents were called and they told her parents that she was a suicidal drug addict because she did that. However, I was readmitted to school. They did have to let me finish out my year and graduate. And... While I'm doing this, my senior year, while most people are studying for their SATs and looking at colleges and picking out prom dresses, I was going to court hearings and writing articles for the Civil Liberties Union and being a public speaker at Civil Liberties Union addresses and conferences, and being interviewed by 
the news a lot. And I was on heavy rotation on MTV. Money for nothing and the chicks for free. Oh boy, George, what did you get me into? Yep. Kurt Loader was documenting my case up to three times a day on MTV for a while. Um, there were reporters coming to school that were finding out my, my schedule and kind of paparazziing, I guess, during my lunch period. They were getting um, threatened by Mr. Thomas because they would come onto school property trying to interview me, trying to get interviews. ABC, NBC, CBS, all the major stations. I was on all of them. Um, I like literally had to tell them you know, that they would have to wait until the school day was over and they would like wait like right out of out of bounds in the parking lot of where that they were allowed to stand without getting arrested for, for trespassing on school property. It was pretty intense. Then I also, of course, I got to meet White Zombie when they came to town and um, the record label, they sent me a huge box of, of t-shirts to hand out to, the, to my friends. Um, and yeah. <laughs> That's how I became a hometown celebrity. Well, I'm not even just hometown. For a minute, I was, I guess, uh, I was a celebrity everywhere. Um, when I went backstage, um, the first time I met White Zombie, and I went backstage, I remember their bass player, Sean, the girl, she, she said to me, oh, you're the, you're the White Zombie t-shirt girl. She's like, they love you overseas. She's like, you know, because they're always making fun of America. She's like, she's like, whenever we do an interview anywhere, any other country, they always ask about you. Um, See, so yeah, everybody in the band was obviously, you know, very cool. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> That's how my that that's how I finished out my se my senior year. The terms to allow me to return to school had nothing to do with my academic performance, my words. Now looking back, I think that Ms. Parker probably her real problem was probably that she thought I was a lesbian. I want to talk about the dangers and also just the ridiculous waste of time of prejudging people because this school crucified me or attempted to anyway crucify me for something for a reason that didn't even in fact exist. Now I can understand where Ms. Parker was drawing her conclusions from. Well, if she likes a shirt that has caricatures of sexy women on it, clearly she must be a lesbian and that's an embarrassment to our school, so we, we must force her to change. Now. None of the other kids that had that same shirt were ever asked to change because they were all boys. I wasn't wearing the shirt because I personally found the cartoons sexual. 
Like most teenage girls, I had body issues. I thought I was fat and ugly. My mother bought me the shirt because she thought that the cartoon women on it looked like me. And she probably wanted me to feel that regardless of how I felt about myself or the fact that the media at that the mainstream media at that time was was shoving an anorexic image down young girls throats i think my mother was trying to tell me that you know regardless of how you feel about your body there's men out there that consider you an ideal a goddess figure a superhero I think that was the message. And, you know, I, maybe they don't understand that in a small conservative town, but my mother was an artist from Manhattan who crossed paths and worked and worked around people like Andy Warhol and Stan Lee. Um, so to her, as well as to me and my sisters, who were also all artists, um, it was not a sexually uh, provocative image, but one of just female power and also, for me, just rock and roll because I liked the band. I have this huge portfolio um, scrapbook of just everything that happened. Articles that were written by me, articles that were written about me, I mean, just, it was quite the ordeal. All the major newspapers and the local newspapers and, um, and then the parents, I mean, the parents of the town were really kind of woke up when this happened because it became a big issue that um, that Mr. Thomas had had done this to me while ignoring swastikas being painted around the school. So, so I had the record industry on my side, <laughs> and I had the Jewish community on my side. And for a change, I even had my parents on my side. And in a moment of glory, I had the law on my side. So even though it seems hopeless many times, it's always worth attempting to fight for your rights. Because my case did eventually, after many, many months, it did eventually get dismissed. And so did Mr. Thomas. He was removed from his position as high school principal. Which was a good thing. Because even before what he did to me, there were way too many kids, three in one year to be exact, as well as another 20 that were expelled in the first like month of school, um, that didn't know how to stand up for their rights. That didn't know how to write letters to the media. Some of those kids died. And that is truly a tragedy.
And that is also why of the three suicides that we had in the past in the past year or that year, one of them had been a friend of mine who was bullied personally by Mr. Thomas. Um, so that was a big reason why I did what I did. I just had enough. And I always say, any system that is built on corruption is bound to fall sooner or later. Because that is what happens. If you look at history, which is what I'm doing right now, but that's what happens. Um, with anything, with any government, any company, Eventually, it can take a long time, but eventually, some fan mail, <laughs> handwritten before the internet, eventually, I believe, The good guys win. And the good women. Yeah. It's all official. <laughs> United States Department of Education. So I know it's rough out there, you guys. It's still rough for me. I still experience a lot of these kinds of things. But never be afraid to try. Never be afraid to speak. Never be afraid to do everything that you possibly can in your power. To stop awful injustice from happening. So, yeah. Uh, lots of people can say they graduated with honors, but how many people can say they graduated with honors and compliments from Geffen Records? <laughs> Quite a way to go out. They also booked me some journalism gigs, writing about my ordeal in various rock magazines. This was one of them. Ha Magazine. Um, there's an article, one of my first articles I ever wrote is in here. It's kind of funny, it has Trent Reznor on the cover. Oh, the irony. Truly a tragedy.